question refers to sensory work. Mm. So um, while doing sensory work, it happens to me that I um, approach the situation from a, from a place how I feel about it now. Yeah. And so I'm wondering how can I overcome this nostalgia yeah. and access the emotions that I had back then. Yeah. So to start off, for a lot of folks who may or may not understand when we talk about sensory, right? Sensory is experiencing now physical senses, right? Imaginary things, touch, taste, smell, sight, and sound. Right? And we experience that now you can, you can combine those sensations into things as simple as a cup of coffee right? or as dramatic and complex as a conversation that you had or an, an action that happened to you or that you were engaged in 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. right? then, then we might call it emotional memory yes. right? if, it's, if it has this charge of experience to it. But we do it always with, with the knowledge that we're having and experience right now. And this is the part where you're getting stuck, right? That um, I, can, I can feel your eyes stick squarely on the emotion that's supposed to come. Mm -hmm. So that's what- I'm already what, caught up in an idea. You're already caught up in an idea. Even when you, you sit down, you start the exercise, you go, okay, now I've got to work on this. Immediately you're jumping to, you're thinking about things. Let me think about it. And immediately you think about it, you feel things, you go, oh, that's what I want. I want, no, I don't want this one, I want the other one. I want the other feeling, right? We don't, we don't train sensory, the, the sensations of the body, so that you can tell it what emotion you want. We train it so that it opens you up to all the sensations that are coming your way. That's the first thing for you to understand. So I want you to do the exercise properly, and by that I mean don't manipulate it to give you a result. Could it be that also um, I'm kind of... Um unconsciously protecting myself by not going there and like telling myself well I'm I'm already like over that and I can for sure you know like I'm um, I it is know. a convenient habit this habit it, it is absolutely you're right 100% right it's a protective habit mm -hmm. but that's why that's why you'd rather stay in the current moment that's why you're not you think oh let me just get the let me just get the fear because instinctively it's gonna end up superficial yeah some part of you knows it will never be successful doing that. And you'll chase, you'll chase yourself around going, well, I wanted the fear, but it just didn't happen. I wanted the fear, it just didn't happen. I wanted the fear, but I guess now I'm over it. And, yeah. you, and you kind of put yourself into a little circle there, and it's completely safe. Yeah. Now, the truth is, going in and finding the real experience is also safe. It just doesn't feel safe. Yeah. You know, I was, I was talking to a class the other day about recognizing the difference between fear and danger. Right? What you're experiencing is fear, not danger. Yeah. Right? You're actually not in any danger in the classroom exactly. having that sensation, but the body thinks, thinks that there is, right? So if you can realize that, if you can start to recognize that difference, it'll help you lean into it. But how do you do that? Forget, in a, like, and this is why you also should relax a little before you start. It helps you forget about entertaining us. Because one of the reasons you're resisting is because you think, I've got to get to this place. And it's not for you, it's for the rest of the people watching. You know, I've got to perform. Like people, you're in class, people start crying in class. It's a laughing in class. <laughs> they make all these sounds. And it's like, oh. okay, okay, I can do that too. Yeah, I can do that yeah. too, right? Um, how, do you, how, do you do, how do you get a sensation for yourself, not for anyone else? Yeah. And that's, that's why we use the five senses. If you, if you forget that this thing is supposed to entertain you, if you forget you're in an acting class, this is not about acting class, this is just learning how to concentrate. Taking off the pressure. Yeah, take, exactly right. Take the pressure off of what it, where it needs to lead you. Focus on what do you smell. Mm -hmm. And pick one. What's the strongest sense for you so far? Um, smell and touch. Smell and touch. Yeah. So start with one of those. right? In fact, for you, I wouldn't use sight for a little while. Mm -hmm. People are always like they're looking, they're always trying to see things, see things. Yeah. Let your eyes close. And don't focus. Enough sight comes if you see something, because you can see with your eyes closed, right? If you see something with your eyes, sure, take it. But don't, don't start there. Let that be the last of the five senses, mm -hmm. right? And now see if you can feel something on your skin without thinking about it. Mm -hmm. so make, you know, so yeah. Get that, right? Like, you know, sometimes I, I mess with people and I'll, like, I'll throw a pen at them. 
right? Or I'll punch them, not hard. But you know, you're like, <laughs> by punching, yeah, right? Um, no matter what goes on in your head, your arm still feels that. What happens is there's a sensation, and the brain starts to have a whole story. He just punched me, we're on camera. What the, the, your, your brain starts talking about it. Mm -hmm. You don't need the talking about to feel the punch. You see, that thinking about part is completely extraneous. It's unnecessary. But it's also a way of controlling what just happened. Mm -hmm. Let me control it. Okay, he was joking. It was just an example. He doesn't, he, he, it's not that he doesn't like me. Your brain starts having this whole conversation. You don't need it. So practice when you're in acting class just finding the sensation of the touch on the shoulder. And if the conversation begins, you can kind of watch it almost like somebody else is having it. But don't follow it. Recognize that that's a voice talking in your head, but just come back then to the skin. What does the skin keep telling you? And in a way, for a little while, get lost in the smell, get lost in the touch, for a while. I Eventually, you'll want to direct it a little bit more, but not for not right now. I do sometimes feel that if I had more time than those thirty minutes, right. I think I would get there like at some point. I sometimes feel like. Oh, I'm like, I'm, I'm still need more time. Yeah, yeah. You see, this is, this is the skeptical look on my face. I don't think so. No? No. You rather would say I should, well, like, first of quit all, it and the, then start it new over. You say 30 minutes, but you, you've been doing relaxation probably for 30 minutes, 30, 40 minutes, then another 30 to 40 minutes of exercise. So you're actually sitting in the chair creating a space for creativity for like an hour and a half. And if, you, if you're saying, well, if I had two hours, if I had three hours, I'd get there. I doubt it. Most people fatigue by that point. Yeah. Most brains do not do well. Now, maybe that means you'd be so tired that you'd stop fighting it. You know, but but it's not typical. The things that we do actually happen this fast. Okay. So they don't need two hours to do them. We train them taking two hours. Yeah. Right? Because we want you to, in, in a way, do you ever go to the gym? Yeah. Yeah, so it's mm -hmm. like if you're going to the gym, anyone can do push-ups and go, push up, push up, push up, push up. But they're not going very deep, they're just doing really fast. But we'll say, slow down. We'll have you go really slow so you can feel the muscles move. Mm -hmm. Get a full range of motion as you push out. It's a much stronger exercise if you go slowly. So I like you going slow, and that's why we do want time. But it doesn't take that long. Like we could do it right now. Yeah. You could do it right now and in a minute you'd be touching something powerful for you. I, I know it. I understand. Um, if you were going to work on something right now, mm -hmm. if you were going to work on, um, and again, I think emotional memory is not something I would do, I do typically with people who are brand new, mm -hmm. right? But if you were going to work on an emotional memory, mm -hmm. do you know which one it would be? Yes. Yeah. So just look at the camera for a second. What's the emotional memory? Do you know what it is? Yes. Yeah. Right, so you see, even as her mouth starts to move, look back at me. Got it. Interesting, you had it, you were full of it. As soon as you said it for a moment, it started to show up. Then you look to the camera, it went away. And then you look back at me, and here it is again. All right? Mm -hmm. that, so, so it really is this idea of when you're being watched, your habit goes. <sighs> even as here, you're full of life. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so actually, for you, I would. Um, I would not worry about time at all. Mm -hmm. I was saying that because it happened to me a couple of times yeah. that at the moment when we were supposed to do an activity, yeah. right then it hit me. Yeah. So I was working, working, working. Yeah. Like not much ha was happening. Yeah. But then, like almost before I was about to do the activity, it started coming, and I was like, "Whoa! I want. I would like to have like five more minutes." Oh, right. Right. To, like. Two things about that. One. Um, I have a lot of friends who are doctors, right? And they always tell me about what, what they call the doorknob question. Mm -hmm. So they'll be talking to someone, most in, in this country, you have 15 minutes to meet with your doctor, typically. So they, they go in, they go, how are you? How are things? Anything going on? Look at your chart, let me check, check okay, okay. They, you have some whole conversation about stuff, right? And then as soon as the doctor leaves, and they all tell me the same thing, because it happens every day. As soon as they go, great, well, it's great to see you. And they put their hand on the doorknob to leave. <laughs> like without a doubt, that's when you go, I'm, I'm sorry, doctor, just one more thing. You know, I have been having these shooting pains from my chest down my left arm. Do you know? And the doctor's like, 
It, it's always the most important thing happens when they're about to walk out of the room. Right? It's not coincidence. It's not because, I, you know, I know patient advocates get mad. It's not because they need more time with their, with their patients. It would be nice to have more time. But if you had 20 minutes, not 15, my guess is that question would come 20 minutes when they're about to leave, leave the room. Mm -hmm. You know, some of it is you, is you like stuff that doesn't want to respond or is like a little scared. As soon as you go, oh, now we're done. It's like, oh, but now, oh, too late. Sorry. It's Trixie. Yeah. You know, it knows it can like, it, it would come out. You know, have you ever done, seen this in class where people go like, and who wants to go first? And raise your hand. There are always a whole bunch of people who are like, as soon as your hand goes up, they go, oh, sorry. I, I would have gone, but she went first. But until you raise your hand, they weren't moving. You know? So, so I think the, the issue there is um, you get to make a decision. How far do you want to go? Are you willing to lose? Like, you know, I, I had a friend and coach, um, he said something that was really interesting. He defined commitment mm -hmm. in a beautiful way. He said, commitment is, isn't about what you gain. Like, I'm committed to being a great actor. That's all about gain, being great at something. Commitment is what am I willing to lose to have this thing that I want? Right? So every exercise is actually a, a test of your commitment. Mm -hmm. What are you willing to lose to have this thing that you want? This expression, this range of emotional life, this creativity, this career, what are you willing to give up? And you're not guaranteed to lose it, but you have to at least risk it. You gotta put it on the table like a bet in a poker game. You gotta put it out there on the table. And for you, some of those, like, you're gonna have to figure out what, what that piece is that's holding you back, yeah. right? Like, there's something about you that likes composure. Composure is a big part of it, mm -hmm. you know? There's something about how you look but about your looks, and you're an attractive woman, but there's a there's something you're holding on to mm -hmm. in that. You know, there's a whole image of what a lady looks like, maybe. You know, or what a beautiful woman looks like, and you don't want to give it up. So, so you won't. You know, and you think, oh, am I willing to lose those things? And sometimes, just acknowledging that this is a piece that's holding you back can help you move through it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah, I keep holding on because I keep wanting to look sane. I keep wanting to look, look, you know. Um, smart. I want to look respectable. I want to look serious. I want to look like a real actress. And and, I, and this doesn't feel like that. This is all out of control. Yeah. Right. And you realize you have to actually let go of something. You have to you have to let that habit break. You have to let that mask break. Mm -hmm. And then let yourself follow the sensory and go where it takes you. Yeah. I could ask so many more questions. Yeah.